Hello everyone, this is Bill Klein with North Carolina State University with the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology. This talk will cover pre-plant considerations for the management of strawberry diseases. In this presentation, we'll talk about pre-plant strategies to avoid disease, fumigants and the effects of weather on planting time, and the strawberry crown diseases. Before we get into the main talk, I'd like to show you a reference that will be useful for you. Uh, this is a website, smallfruits.org, and what we're looking at here is the starting page of the Strawberry IPM Guide that lists the title and all the section editors. Uh, this is a publication that is revised every year uh, and is very useful in terms of disease, insect, and weed control uh, strategies. Uh, production practices, lots of good information here. So uh, if you have uh, questions about uh, pest management in your strawberries, this is a good place to go. It's a good guide to print off and, and have handy or have bookmarked on your computer. One of the tables in this guide uh, covers pre-plant disease, nematode, and, and weed management strategies. And so we'll go through this quickly. Uh, the pest problems that you're most often likely to uh, introduce into the planting on, uh, on the plants are uh, diseases like uh, the fungal pathogen anthracnose, uh, angular leaf spot, which is a bacterium, uh, Phytophthora crown rot, uh, Fusarium wilt, a new disease that we'll talk about called uh, Neopestilociopsis, and uh, viruses. And so the use of disease-free plants uh, is really important uh, for uh, having a, su a successful strawberry planting, and that's your key first step uh, in, in uh, pre-plant uh, actions uh, for managing diseases is to make sure you get clean plants to start with. For nematodes, uh, if you have a site that you have a history of nematode problems, uh, I'd encourage you to sample for uh, nematode analysis. Uh, find out what you have be before you plant. One way to manage nematodes and also other soil-borne pathogens is to practice crop rotation. Now, I know this is difficult uh, because you have irrigation setups that are plumbed into the uh, production field, but if there's any way you can configure your irrigation to allow you to rotate fields and practice crop rotation, that's a good way to think about uh, setting up long-term for uh, successful strawberry production is, is having multiple fields that you can service through the same irrigation system. For uh, weed control and also for a lot of root and crown rot disorders that, uh, that overwinter in the soil and also for nematodes, our, our uh, primary strategy uh, uh, once the, uh, the site has been selected uh, is, uh, is pre-plant fumigation. And this is a, a key part of the plasticulture uh, production system. One problem we see with pre-plant fumigation is our fumigants uh, are, are fairly slow acting and slow to dissipate. So uh, if you fumigate under black plastic and uh, punch the holes in the plastic and you're still smelling fumigant, uh, that's a good indication that it's too soon after fumigation to plant. Uh, some of the older fumigants would dissipate quite quickly. Some of the uh, more recent products that are, that are currently available take longer to gas off. They take longer to, to disappear. And uh, so to make sure it's safe to plant, you may be waiting uh, weeks instead of days uh, to, to plant uh, behind some of the, the current fumigants. So just, just be aware that that can be a problem. If we look at uh, the table of fumigants that are available, uh, most of the products that uh, that are currently in use are some combination of 1,3-dichloropropene and chloropicrin. Uh, those seem to be the, the most efficacious materials. If you look at the columns on the right, relative efficacy for nematodes, diseases, nut sedge, and weeds, uh, most of the products that are rated E for excellent or G for good are, um, are, are a combination of, uh, of telone and, and chloropicrin. Uh, I will say for, uh, for the nut sedge column, there's just not much to do for nut sedge other than avoiding sites that have uh, nut sedge on them. So that's a, a big consideration for weed control because uh, nut sedge will, 
will of course grow right through uh, black plastic uh, mulch. So it's just a really difficult weed to, to control uh, in, in strawberries and you want to avoid sites with nut sedge. Back to diseases. Uh, this is a symptom of anthracnose uh, crown rot on strawberry. Uh, you should be in contact with your nursery and uh, that you're receiving plants from and and don't be afraid to question them about uh, diseases that they've seen in the nursery. You, your your uh, biggest defense against these diseases is not to bring them onto the farm in the in the first place. So, so you'd like to go to a nursery source that that uh, is providing you with clean plants that don't don't have these diseases on them. Uh, when you receive plants, uh, if they have anthracnose crown rot, what you'll often see is the small circular spots, sort of shadow spots on the leaves. And this is an indication that the anthracnose crown rot fungus is there. It's, the spores are landing on these leaves and making these spots. And it's an indicator that you may have anthracnose crown rot in the plants uh, showing up as a crown wilt after the plants are in the field. So at, at this point, you should be considering some sort of control measure, perhaps a plant dip, uh, if your plants come in with these symptoms on them. The classic symptoms of anthracnose crown rot are, are a crown uh, wilt. Uh, it can happen very rapidly, uh, either in the fall of the year or in the spring in the fruiting period. And uh, plants uh, die completely. Uh, when you cut the crown open, you will see discoloration in the crown, and it's usually a, a sort of marbled look to it rather than a solid brown color. Uh, just some more shots here of anthracnose crown rot, the, the spots on the leaves the sort of die out you see in the trays and uh, in the uh, the lower right you see the uh, the marbling in that crown when you cut it open with a pocket knife you can see the, the discoloration in the crown that's characteristic of this disease. So to manage anthracnose crown rot uh, you would like to use disease free plants. There, there's no resistance among the cultivars that we grow so clean plants really become essential at that point. Uh, monitor your fields. If you do start seeing plants wilting and dying from uh, anthracnose crown rot, remove those plants, get them out of the field so that they don't serve as a source of inoculum to infect other plants. If the plants arrive, they appear to have symptoms of anthracnose. Uh, a plant dip uh, can help manage the disease. Uh, Switch is a fungicide a combination product of ciprodonil and fluteoxanil that can be used as a plant dip. If you do use switch, you want to plant immediately after dipping. So don't dip the plants and then plant them days later or, or, uh, or you'll see some stunting in the, in the plants. So go ahead and get them in the ground. Uh, there's another product that's labeled called Zivion. Uh, we don't have any data from North Carolina on this product. The active ingredient is, uh, is natamycin. Uh, a lot of work done in California with this uh, product, but it's, it's another thing to consider using as a plant dip uh, for anthracnose. The other crown wilt that we see most commonly is Phytophthora root rot. It looks a little different from anthracnose uh, with Phytophthora often a, a small part of the center of the crown or, or the foliage uh, will remain alive. So you'll see this sort of bluish small stunted leaves in the center of the crown that don't die out. But really hard to make that distinction in the field. So uh, if you look at a field like this where uh, this row where, where we have a picture of some healthy plants and then some wilted plants among them. Uh, this is Phytophthora crown rot, but it's really hard to diagnose just, just looking at them. So what I would encourage you to do is to pull up a few plants, cut the crowns, uh, and, and look for that um, discoloration in the crown. With, with Phytophthora, it's usually going to be a solid brown area in the crown, as you see on the lower left. But really would like those plants to go to the plant disease and insect clinic and get confirmation. The reason you want to confirm this is your response to this disease is very different from what you would do for anthracnose. So you want to make sure that's what you're dealing with. Uh, there's the, uh, the URL for the plant disease and insect clinic uh, at the bottom of the uh, screen there and uh, really encourage you to, to send a sample into the clinic either directly or through your county extension agent. Phytophthora crown rot uh, is going to be a, usually a, a brown discolored area in the crown that is not marbled like anthracnose. 
So you can often tell or get a good idea uh, what you're dealing with just by cutting the crowns open. If you look at the symptoms on uh, plants in trays, you'll tend to have this sort of uh, wetter looking uh, rot on the runners and, and petioles. Uh, anthracnose, by contrast, uh, tends to be a drier rot. Uh, you've, sometimes you'll even see sporulation, spores produced on the surface of the plant parts. Phytophthora tends to, to look uh, wetter and be more like a damping off sort of, uh, sort of symptom. But again, this is, this is something that the lab can confirm for you. If you have access to a microscope, uh, you, you can get a definitive uh, diagnosis of, of a Phytophthora crown rot. And uh, some county extension offices do have uh, microscopes uh, where they can uh, take a piece of the root, uh, put it on a microscope slide, crush it under a cover slip, and that squashed piece of uh, root system, uh, if Phytophthora is present, you'll often see these uh, O-spores inside the root. So this is a microscopic view of the cells inside a strawberry root that we're, we're seeing here on the slide. And uh, you see these round structures in there, double-walled, thick-walled spores called O-spores. And they're distinctive for uh, Phytophthora and, and related uh, uh, organisms. And so you see that inside the roots, you can, can uh, have, be pretty confident that you're seeing uh, Phytophthora root rot and crown rot. To manage Phytophthora crown rot, some things are the same as anthracnose, but there are some different things that you need to do. It's a water mold, so it's a bit different of an organism. Uh, so you do want to use clean plants, often introduced on infected plant material. So again, your, your contact with your nursery and your discussion with, the, with what diseases they may be seeing in the nursery is really important. Uh, Phytophthora is a problem on uh, poorly drained soils, so site selection, site prep becomes really important. You want to monitor and conserve irrigation. Uh, sometimes I see Phytophthora problems in plant trays where, where someone maybe gets their plants in, they're not ready to put them in the field, so they'll set them aside in a nursery area and just water them uh, to, uh, too much to, uh, often. Uh, and, and this can spread Phytophthora around in the trays before you ever set the plants in the field. So you want to avoid uh, having your trays sitting in a, in a puddle or a wet area, a lot of splashing around that might spread this disease in the plants before you ever plant them. As far as chemical control, uh, methanoxam or ritamyl gold and metal axil uh, can be effective when applied in the fall or in the spring of the year. Now, uh, a newer disease I want to discuss uh, is, uh, is called the Neopestilotiopsis, which that's a big mouthful of a Latin name to say, but uh, it's a pestilotia-like fungus that uh, is causing problems in Florida and Georgia as a fruit rot, a crown rot, and also uh, spots on the leaves. And the Pestilotia uh, fungi as a group uh, are really common. We see them all the time on, on plant disease samples as a weak pathogen or a secondary invader. And they all have spores that look very similar. You see in the photo here the uh, five-celled spores that are pointed on one end and on the other end they have these little appendages that sort of look like a little squid uh, like tentacles and, and so it's a really distinctive looking spore. It's easy to diagnose to, to that stage but then you really can't determine whether this is a, a fairly harmless fungus or the new highly pathogenic type. So, um, so this is a real challenge for us in, uh, in plant pathology to, to address this uh, pathogen. The uh, Neopestilotiopsis has been uh, reported as a crown disease, uh, leaf spots and fruit rot in, in Florida and Georgia. And it's important in this pre-plant discussion because it's thought to be introduced on, on planting stock. And again, you can't really visibly distinguish it from other weak Pestilotia-like fungi. Both, both the new uh, Neopestilotiopsis and the older um, sort of saprophytic Pestilotia uh, produce these sort of black spore masses on fruit. So uh, you really need to uh, be having this discussion with your, with your nursery and with the plant source about whether they've had this problem, whether they've had problems reported from their nursery. 
So in, in summary, uh, pre-plant disease strategies, uh, avoidance is your, your first and most important uh, tool. You want to use clean plants. The diseases in an annual hill production system are most often introduced on infected plants. So clean plants are a must. Your site selection, site preparation has a bearing on disease. If you've got a poorly drained soil or a site that's got a history of disease, that may be the source of your problem. So uh, good site prep and, and if possible, uh, rotate sites to avoid planting in the same field year after year. If you do see a problem, let's get it diagnosed. If, if you see symptoms on transplants, either before planting or after, uh, let's identify the pathogen or the abiotic cause, so whatever, whatever may be causing the problem, before you decide on a treatment strategy. Uh, you've got to have a correct diagnosis before you can know how to go forward. So uh, uh, let's, let's get that uh, problem diagnosed and, and uh, be ready to uh, address it uh, properly. So I hope everyone has a has a great uh, season coming up here. There's my uh, email address if anyone needs to reach me. Uh, your your best resource is your local county extension agent. And if you don't know them, don't know where they are, look them up. They're on uh, on the web. You can go to the extension uh, website uh, URL linked there to the local county center index. Find your county agent, find their email, their phone number, and, and get in touch with them. County agents are really a great, uh, great resource, uh, and and uh, can help you uh, get samples, uh, help you get samples diagnosed, and help you decide courses of treatment. And uh, finally, I encourage you to use the Plant Disease and Insect Clinic at NC State. Uh, these these folks uh, have a lot of diagnostic uh, capacity there, and can help you determine uh, which uh, disease you have and how best to address it. So uh, thank you for your attention. I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, best wishes for the coming season.